Paul Blackmore from the Atlanta Botanical Garden is an expert in carnivorous plants. I love this topic and I love this grouping of plants. It's, it's actually something I don't know that much about. And every time I chat with you about them, I learn so much. Yeah. Today, you're gonna show us how to build our own little bog bowl and plant these beautiful, we've got Venus fly traps, some pitcher plants. I don't even know what this guy is. That's oh, a that's, uh, that's one of our favorites. That's a sundew. A lot of people want to have a bog, and we have a huge bog here. You know, a big bog is you need a lot of land, you need a lot right. of time, money, it's hard work, you need to 100% sunshine. Uh, so we often suggest to our visitors uh, that they try initially a bog bowl, which is the perfect, perfect opportunity to make a bog, yeah? It's as simple as it could possibly be. First of all, you want a nice bowl, bowl that's fairly wide, not too deep. Uh, the deeper it is, the more materials you need, and that's right. unnecessary. The plants we're going to use today are just a few random selections. Uh, I've included um, a, picture, a couple of pitcher plants of two different types. Both are hybrid. This is Saracenia citocena with the parrot head. And um, another hybrid, this is Saracenia purpurea with something else mixed in. A really interesting plant are the sun juice. Sun dews, they're called that because you come out in the morning after a, a, a cool night and they're covered in sparkling oh, little, little diamonds yeah, of, I can see of that. sticky, really sticky liquid. Yeah. They, insects simply can't resist them and if they go anywhere near them, of course, as you can see on this one, they're absolutely stuck to, yeah, the, all those to the thing. Or whatever they are. They're, yeah. yeah, they're little uh, peat gnats actually. And right. once they're stuck there, this thing will just digest them. And then, of course, the favourite of all favourites is the Venus flytrap. Every school child in America, and certainly in the UK, they love Venus flytraps. Now, I'll tell you something about this plant, Eric, that you probably may not know. Although you can buy it all over the world because it's a novelty, right. it only actually evolved in one place in South Carolina. Really? One area, one tiny area. Yeah, I it's did only, not know that. It's endemic to that one tiny patch. No one knows why. Wow. But the, the, the whole thing is like a snare. It's like a trap. An insect can land on one side, not a problem. It can land on the other side, not a problem. And so basically the idea is that the insect would need to touch both sides for it to trigger. And once it's in, it's in forever. And that's the end of the story for the insect. So to build a bog, um, you need a few basic things. As I said earlier, you need a good pot. This is a permalon liner, which is our preferred choice. Reason for that is because it'll last 100 years. Your pot needs to have a hole in the bottom for drainage because drainage in a pot, a bog pot, drainage is really, really important, yeah? So we're not building a swamp, we're building a bog, yeah? So you put your liner in, so the liner really will only just fill, you know, a third of the pot. Right, and it allows water through at about three or four inches up. Exactly. You will put just a dust in the pit, uh, sand in the bottom. And the reason for that is because you want a, a layer in the bottom that actually will hold water through a hot sunny day that can then uh, permeate up through the soil, compost. Right. But it will not go stagnant. It's in an inorganic compound like sand. Sure. This is mason sand. It's absolutely essential you get the right sand. Don't use any kind of sand. Don't use gravel. Don't use pavia sand. Don't use a sand that's from crushed granite because it's full of toxic minerals. Okay. You just want mason sand, which I believe is washed river sand. And then your planting compost. You don't want to go to the, to the garden centre and buy potting compost. Right, yeah? okay. Why? Because that's full of fertiliser and that will kill your plants in a heartbeat. Yeah. So all we want Sterile Canadian peat. It's five parts peat, one full pot of the sand. It's always advised, uh, good advice to wear surgical gloves when you're working with peat, yeah? Because peat, funny enough, can contain some pretty nasty fungal things. Right. You basically want to mix the two as fast as possible. You won't even see the sand, but the sand does two things. The sand adds weight to the compost yeah okay so even if i put all the whole pot in there you still wouldn't see the sand it would be in invisible um but when you do add the sand to it 
and then you add the water to it. Peat moss will take up seven times its own volume in water, wow. you see. So it's, it's fairly greedy. When you feel like you've got it well mixed, and you really, really do need it mixed, you pick a handful up, you gently squeeze it, some water will come out, but it will stay like this. It has structure. You don't have to squeeze it all out. Now the fun bit. You do want it fairly firm because what you don't want is you don't want air pockets. You don't want patches of dry media, which you can sometimes find zones of dry media. If you plant these plants in a dry compost, the plants will be there growing and the compost will take the water out of the plants. And that will be a death sentence. They will be murdered. Yeah, it really is just a, a super heavy, wet soil. Yeah, it's we just We wouldn't a... recommend this for really any other, any other type of plant outside Not of this all. category specifically. You really want to make sure that you get it kind of domed up a wee bit. Uh, it will sink and you don't want it too firm on the top. Now, I think it's time where we could plant something. So we'll start with the, the sundew. This is a drosera, a sundew. This guy will take care of hundreds of mosquitoes. And then really, you just really want to make a nice fluffy hole. Now, the second thing you want to concern yourself with really is the depth. Depth is everything. Of all the trees planted every year around the world, a significant portion of them die, and they die because they were planted too deep. Right. We'll go on to our Ceracemia citacena hybrid. Citacena, that basically means parrot nose, parrot, parrot headed. Um, and again, you know, a little, a decent, a decent hole. Keep it away from the edge. You don't want it on the edge. Uh, this guy will fill up. It will get wider. They'll get wider rather than tall. It will spread out. And firming is important, but do not hammer it down. You can't have a bog without a fly trap, right? You don't have to go to South Carolina and nick these from the wilds, yeah? You can buy these online. And now this guy is perfect for around the outside of the bog. You must make sure that you don't get the compost in the crown of the plant. Right, right. Because that right. will rot it. With these guys, sometimes, sometimes the Venus fly traps will, if they come in contact with the soil, so if they have a wet, cold night, they'll lay down, they can rot, yeah? So what we tend to do is we'll lift them up and we'll put just a dust in the sand dry sand gotcha. around the outside so they have a bed to lay on and that's really important we want to put this bog bowl out in the pure white sunshine yeah like as much sun as it can get yeah they don't like shade can't tolerate shade right. we want to water it check it every day you have to use water that's got a ph of seven and below you never need to waste your money on fertilizer you do a little hand weeding there's a trick and the trick is in the gift of this live moss. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna just gently just push it in there and firm it down. That's the end. All you gotta do is sit back and enjoy it, yeah? Wow. End of story. That's beautiful, Paul. I can't, I, I can't wait to see this in, what did you say, maybe a month and a half? It's oh yeah, you see this building. in a month and it's gonna be amazing.